you know a copy of the uh you didn't let me see what I could you. Thank you. We are live. Okay, uh call this meeting to order. Um and we will say what we did. Go ahead, I'm just gonna set up our microphone. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Um, and Travis Guerin will read the uh, public input statement. Uh, the first public input session is a 15-minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. A second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. Each speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Please note that statements involving certain subject matters such as personnel cannot be made during these public input sessions. Does anyone have public input tonight? And you can just come on up, state your name and what town you're from, and then um, I just want to be clear, public input isn't a time to answer questions back and forth with the board, so you just present your concerns and then we will take them up as soon as they can. Okay, so you don't answer my question. Not necessarily, but I'm happy to actually set up a time with you separately if you want to, so that you can get that get those answers a little bit more easily. Okay. So you want my name and address? Carrie Vasco, 81 Depot Road, Lebanon, Maine. Um, so I've gotten calls from teachers uh, that say that they are being instructed on critical race theory or DEI, whichever you'd like to call it. It's the same. It is the same thing. Um, as a taxpayer, I'd really like a copy of the Cornelius Minor We Got This to review what kind of critical race theory is being taught. Um, I've heard uh, quite a bit about critical race theory, and it is not good nor healthy and teaches our children to be bigots. We don't need to be going back 60 years, 70 years in that realm and teaching our kids to be Jim Crowists. Um, I'd also like to know how much did the district pay the DEI speakers, is what you're calling them, the diversity, equity, and inclusion speakers. I'd like to know how much was spent for that. Um, are they coming back for more workshops, and how much is that costing? Um, when are you going to inform parents that you are initiating Jim Crow and taking our children back to the 60s? Um, I, I find this appalling as I've been hearing about critical race theory for a couple of years. years. And I, I really thought that the school district, I'm very proud of it when my kids went here, I'm very appalled that this is being pushed to our teachers now to be reading this book to, to their students. And, and I would like to know what you're teaching the kids in my community, especially when you're looking at spending $70 million on a school. I think there's going to be a lot of exits from the school, as it should. Um, and if that's going to continue going forward, and the sex ed also gets pushed, um, I, I think we need to start looking at a different paradigm for schools which would be the money follows the students. Thank you. Did you want to answer any questions? You can just set up, a, we'll set up the time to talk yeah. with you, just because you have a lot of questions. Okay, yeah. yep. Thank you. Anyone else? Public input? Okay, um, next on the agenda is the minutes of October 7th. Has everyone had a chance to read the minute? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, just, I just shared them with the staff really quick. So she's okay. Quick. She's my grammar chat. Okay. 
Are there any corrections? We'll give. Uh, Does it matter? In a couple minutes. If it's seconded, do we usually label who seconds or no? It doesn't matter. It, um, it, I tried to, oh, okay. but I may have made, may have made a, a miss okay. error. I, well, I'll try it. And we can go back and look at it. I can fill that in if they have noted it. Yeah, missing the uh, seconds for the executive session. Says that Miss Lovejoy was not here, but she was here she via the, the computer. Meeting. Yeah, she answered the meeting. Oh, I see that. I missed yeah. that sentence. Perfect. Yep. Any other corrections or comments? I'm not finding anything. Okay, wait a little bit longer. Make a motion to accept them as amended. Um, all those in favor? Okay. Um, Thank you. Um, next item is uh, the September financial summary. Jen should have shared with you the financial summary for September, but I'm also going to pass it to the meeting. Look at you. Oh, we're so much more techy than we do. Don't give her all the credit yet. <laughs> <She's got this. laughs> oh, yeah. Um, it's very small. I, <laughs> I don't know, it's probably better to look at your screen, but um, basically what it shows is we are uh, right on track with the revenue, 75% um, or so remaining both of the year of revenue income. Um, if you look down at the expenses, again, we're tracking well. I would say the one thing I'm aware of where we are spending aggressively is um, transportation for athletic events. And um, we're not over budget or anything like that yet, but it, we are definitely outpacing in year I've known. So, so be aware. Yeah. And that's lack of drivers, so we're having to actually utilize some um, outside transportation. Yeah. Anybody have any questions? Um, always available. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next item is the um, meeting broadcast discussion. Sure. So we started okay. this discussion the last meeting, and we yeah. decided we would bring it forward this meeting. We talked a little bit about um, do we continue to uh, cast this live, or do we? Um, have something similar to when BCTV was here where we would have it filmed and then a day delay and then it would go um, on. So just wanted to have that conversation again. We did, you know, notice that there was some activity in school on Fridays when um, the meetings were occurring and it was live streamed. We were seeing some uh, carry over into the, the high school, particularly the next day. So that prompted this conversation to start, but we certainly want to, you know, accommodate, you know, what we can. What we can. We right now we have how many? We have five live right now. I think we're still so far. One of them is Andy. Yeah, there's a few. Right, right. Um, we have some administrators on, and we have 
possible. And I think as noted last two weeks ago, it was a fairly quiet meeting as well, and therefore there was not a lot of over overrun in the schools the next day. So I, I mean a lot of it is just about the the tenor of the meetings and how folks are bringing things forward and if this remains like this, then it's it's less about initially schools. I personally think we can do the go ahead and do it a day later just because um, if people can't make it to the meeting in person, um, I don't know if they'd be able to live stream it because if they're unable to be here in the first place. And uh, just because the last meeting was nice and quiet doesn't mean future stuff won't come up. Just the whole thing with the kids and the day after, um, you know, for teachers, peace of mind with that. That's what I would mean just putting it on the day later. I don't see it being, I don't see it hurting anything just to hold up the extra day. But that's just my opinion. Um, just for your, just, just for clarity, um, once it's live streamed, it's also recorded. So it's up on YouTube forever. So people can go into it later. So it is available on demand. It's available yes. on demand. Okay. Here we go. One on demand. Yep. So just, just to make sure that you know that that's there. I think to me, if we have the capability to do it, I understand it puts a little extra stress on Chris because of his nighttime availability, but I think we can also spread that out to some other members of the tech department. Um, I think I'd like to see us still continue to offer it for people. It is being used. Uh, I know that there are people that can't come here because they have kids that they have to take care of, so they are not, don't have any availability to come here. Um, and, but, I mean, that's, either way, I think it works. We've done it for years without live streaming. Mm -hmm. I think the new technology is to live stream. It just seems to flow better. I think the issues of the after activities after our board meetings on the next day kind of falls on us on how we handle the meetings, period. Okay. Ooh, <laughs> we have Does anybody else have a, an opinion on that or? I think if it's been um, disrupted in the past because of the activity, the negative activity here, um, understandably, I think we should give the teachers a break during this very hard year and broadcast it a day later. And if it's on demand, people could watch it anytime. I'm assuming that once it's live, as you said, it's on YouTube, I can go in and watch it on Saturday morning or over coffee on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm kind of, I kind of agree with that. I, I don't, I mean, it would be nice if we didn't have to worry about it, but with all the discipline problems that are happening, um, I don't want to add to it. And, um, you know, I don't know what really the advantages of watching it live versus, um, watching it the next day went if unless you're voting on something. I mean school board members who have to vote, that could be live, but um, I think because it's not interactive, there's no reason why yeah. we wouldn't be able to delay it a, a, a day. And it's just um, I mean I I don't have kids in the school so obviously I don't really know everything that's going on but some of the emails that have been going around sounds like it's the staff is really being pushed to the limit as it is if there's anything we can do to take some burden off them i would be willing to do that so i'm not sure that live versus non-live is going to help that process i think if we were to have a meeting like we've had in the past that caused some of those issues whether it was live or not I think we would have still had the issue the next day. So Chris just shared some data with me, some just raw data about um, the Nova Live YouTube channel. So the average watch time of a school board meeting is, and this is average over the, I don't know how many, 
it's like a 30-ish dates. September 3rd of 2020, over the past year. Um, 14 minutes and 54 seconds. So people are not actually live time necessarily watching the whole thing. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of data about like average percentage viewed, um, I think. The August 19th meeting was pretty high, and as was October 7th. Although we didn't have that many people. Oh, no, no. So I'm not, I don't think I'm understanding that clearly. Um, our highest actual viewed, from what I can tell, was, and again, these are views, I think, not just live, but like as they go into to later to look at the recordings. Um, the August 19th meeting had 225 views. And so, just things like that. And then 86% um, of our viewers are females, 13% <laughs> are men, and 54.9% are ages 35 to 44. <laughs> so, it should, I don't know what that, what that says about anything, but I didn't, I don't think I did a great job. I have to look at this data a little bit more clearly. It just popped it over to me. Um, I kind of feel like if, if delaying a day is, is possibly going to make sense, we would go in that direction. Well, um, do we want to vote on it or someone want to make a motion on this or do things as is or? Okay, so the motion. Uh, <laughs> so I make the motion that we broadcast our meetings a day after the meetings have taken place. We want to second. We second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. All those in favor? Against? Uh, next item schedule a facility and finance meeting um, just want to schedule the facilities and finance committee meeting after the november 2nd vote just for an initial meeting and this would be on the budget this wouldn't be the building committee or um, another committee so I'm going to just send something out, but I just wanted those of you who are interested to, to look for those dates and see. I'll, I'll send out some possible dates and just see if you're interested in that. We typically have one rep per town. Travis, I believe you're still on the committee for Berwick. Is that right? Okay. Um, I think. Is it Nancy or was it Joanne? I had Joanne on one of my committees. I guess yeah, yeah. I'm on both of them, which is confusing that right, I got yeah. it. I think Nancy was on right, Nancy was on the building, building committee. Yeah. And so yeah. was on the facilities and finance. Lynn. Yeah. And, and then Lynn yeah. was on the facilities and finance. Okay. So I'll just send out some times to me just so we can have an initial budget meeting, talk about goals and different things like that. Are you are you looking after the vote? I am looking after November second. So that week or the week after? Whatever, does, does the week after work for you or does that week Both, work? Well, both of them work because it looks like I, the, I work on the second. Okay. And then I would work on the 10th. Okay. I'm in my weekend rotation, so I have weeks, okay. weekdays off. So. All right, so we'll look at that and get out a couple of dates and times. So are we um, stating that Mr. DeWire, who are the, who are reps going to continue to be Mr. DeWire? Mr. And then we're looking at Lebanon because because Nancy was on the, is on the building committee, right? Joanne was on facilities and finance. Should we <laughs> schedule a building aspect too after the vote so we can know which direction to go? We should probably get that one done first, and then the facilities and finance, unless we want to combine it again. I don't. I mean, that one's that one has outside reps as well. Mm -hmm. So, but I think after that vote on the second, it's important for us to move forward in the next direction, whichever direction it is. Okay. So maybe the third, November 3rd, which is 
Would be the building. Wednesday. Would be the building committee. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think that's actually really appropriate. Yep. And then we'll do facilities and finance the following week. Okay. Not the tenth. Okay. Um. We have policies for first reading. Sure. You, Jen, I believe shared the policies with you, and those are just the ones that um, talk about public input. So the committee met, and we do have some recommendations. We'll revisit, we'll come back and, and talk through that again briefly at a subcommittee level and bring it back to the next board meeting for final final meeting approval. So there's no changes on this first policy reading? Not at this point. We have some proposed coming up, but we have had a conversation about public input that we need to make sure that we are show that we are reflecting in the policies. Okay. Next item: uh, educational programming. So we had a board um, request to um, put out the pool testing survey again and do some paper copies. We did, after speaking with the high school and the middle school, decide to send those out remotely to parents because sometimes paper copies don't get there uh, efficiently. So the elementary schools did have paper copies go home of uh, just the information to get about pool testing and would uh, parents be interested in moving ahead. So we received all the results today from the buildings and the range is 13 percent to 16 percent of parents have expressed an interest in moving ahead with school testing at this point in time and that is very similar to the numbers that we have had the last two times we've done this survey so at this point i believe our recommendation along with amy's is to table this for a little while because it is coming up for families and we know it's causing a little bit of um, continued stress for them just getting the same survey and um, that's our recommendation at this point. I think that's our best interest because I would suspect within the next I'm going to put my money down say within the next two weeks we'll probably have 5 to 11 right. approval yes. so uh, then we can move forward in that aspect and it would hopefully mitigate the pool test in need which adds way more stress to our school in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And then just the a couple of other quick things we want to just talk about attendance, which we usually run through at this point in time. We have um, our attendance record has been a low of 75% attendance for students, and that was at one of our smaller schools. And our highest percentage of attendance is 95, and almost every school met that 95% over the last two weeks. Um, but as I mentioned, that the school with the lower numbers um, just has higher impact when they have students out. They've also had a couple of um, cases that have impacted bus, and so students have had to quarantine um, based on that. For our staff, our staff is running, we had a low of 87% of attendance and then a high of 93 um, and as I mentioned I think in an update that I sent out just that subs it's really hard to get subs and so we do have teachers that are working to help cover and assist cover classes we have continual um, advertisements out for substitutes we've offered some incentives to to kind of help if, if people are taking on an additional duty during a planning period or something to um, be able to help cover the duties so that we have the instructional period still running instructionally. Um, but it's it's been very hard to to find subs and to have applicants. So I mean, what, did, what did, are the qualifications for a sub? Do they have to have their te teaching certificate? They don't. No, no, they don't. Honestly, so. we accept kiddos that are maybe graduated from high school a couple years away. And, mm -hmm. you know, well, Usually, with, we'll put them in with younger kids. But sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Is is there something that we as a board could do to help you with this? Um, I think if you're out and and talking with with community members, just for them, just pointing them in the direction that we've got openings for ed techs as well as subs, and um, just letting them know that they, you know, they can contact the 
our district or a school. And one thing that's really, I think, interesting for for those to know is that you can select what you want. Like if it's somebody who's interested in art, they could sub just for art. They could yeah. sign up for high school art if they wanted to. Okay. Yeah. Or if or they're math, more comfortable at the elementary level yeah. than they are at the high mm -hmm. school level. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they can yeah. really choose based on, yeah. on some of that. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Were we able to fill all of our permanent sub positions? Um, yes. Are they all filled up? Yes. The hard part is that our permanent subs are filling in for other things, right. too, so it's not, they're not as right. slimy as we'd like them to be. And so those are our educational programming updates at this point. Okay. Um, number nine, employment. We have a few new hires that we're bringing forward today for your approval. The first is Jason McCann, and we hired Jason in the summer from Wells as an educational technician as he was following up or just finishing some of his um, teaching uh, classes. And so he has completed that. So we are nominating him as a teacher, special education case manager up in this building at the, at the high school. He graduated um, from Grand Canyon University. And as I said, his most recent position was an ed tech here in the building. So that's our first one. Our second um, candidate that we're bringing forward is Denise Nato, and that is for the position at North Berwick Elementary School, which is response to intervention, which is like a literacy math uh, specialist to work with students. Um, she is being nominated to take the place of Kathleen Campbell. Kathleen moved over to, to um, help facilitate some of our remote learners for the kindergarten to fifth grade if they have some health concerns, as we discussed earlier this year, that we could do some, doing some special programming for students um, that can't necessarily come in quite yet. Um, so Denise Nato, she has a degree from the University of New England. She's currently in the same, um, well, she was in the same position in MSAD6, but right now they have her uh, doing a substitute in the kindergarten classroom. So they are, um, if we approve her, they will start working on an exit plan for her so that she can come work for us. And the next and final candidate that we're bringing forward is Carlita Gary. Um, and this, we just had this interview, This I had this interview at one o'clock today. Um, so she is being nominated for the North Bowick Elementary School Behavior Interventionist position that um, was vacated two weeks ago. And uh, she has her degree in, um, let's see, a master's degree in psychology, and she's trained as a BCBA, which is a behavioral analysis, which is going to be very helpful in this behavior-based position. We're very excited about that. She's currently at the Morrison Center and can um, start with us the week of November 5th, should we approve her. So those are the three candidates that we're bringing forward tonight. So we do need a motion for that. We need a motion on each individual one. I can't recall. I think we can do all of them. You can do them together. Yep. So I'll make a motion to accept the uh, positions that are being presented to us tonight. All three of them. Okay. Ms. Lovetop? Okay. Okay. All those in favor? All those? Okay, we have a leave of absence request, and this will also need to have some um, a formal motion. The leave of absent request is from Shauna Street, who's the currently the Noble, I mean the North Berwick Elementary School school counselor. She has been out um, for maternity leave, and she is asking to extend for the remainder of the school year. And um, so right now, we the recommendation would be. We are very short-staffed. We are running um, North Berwick Elementary School without a counselor there or a long-term sub in that position that's trained in school counseling. And with everything that's just been going on over the last uh, 20 months, 20 plus months, um, it's the recommendation of administration to not um, honor this leave of absence at this point in time, but that is, that's your final, okay. it's up to your decision. Um, we feel just having her come back uh, so that we can start getting some therapeutic uh, work done with our students would be really important. And um, if that's something that won't work out for her, being able to advertise and have some, we'll have a better shot of getting somebody in 
rather than the sum. So, um, so again, that's that's your decision. That's just our recommendation. When is her leave supposed to uh, end? Her maternity leave. Yeah. She's been out since the beginning of the school year. I'm trying to think. I didn't have. It wasn't listed in the letter. I'm trying to think. Yeah. Are we over? If it's not going into next year, it's like it would be pretty soon. It would be. Yeah, she, anytime now. Okay, that's what I was getting at. I didn't know how close to the end of the school year. Okay. Yep. No. Okay. So, um, so that's why they're currently running with the long term sub person in that position because it's really hard to find a very short term um, counselor. And the hope was that she would be back so that we could finish the year. So, um, as much as, I mean, she's a lovely person, so it's not like you want it, it's just the fact of being able to hire somebody. Uh, for just seven months and be willing to you know, step into this job and really do the full job, I think is it's a detriment. If, if, if she can come back, that would be lovely. That would be great. And if she can't, we need to be able to offer this for a real uh, full-time ongoing position. Are we, are we opening the doors for any Family Medical Leave Act issues? Um, no, I don't think so. Would you be open to a compromise in terms of uh, letting her extend through the end of this semester? And then if she, or is it, you really need to act now? If we if we delay, then we're not providing therapeutic services mm -hmm. for our students. So she's requesting a leave of absence until the end of the school year. Yes. Yeah. Are we able to Are we able to put out that position anyway? If she's out on a leave of absence, are we able to advertise for a uh, we would advertise position. for that seven months position. Yeah. So as a as a temporary. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I'll put it out there. I make a motion to accept her leave of absence. It's the only way we can really move forward <laughs> to make it put it out there to figure out if there's any further. <laughs> Anybody want to make a second or make a, a different motion? So we have a motion to accept the leave of absence, so we need a second. Oh, yeah. Well, or it's One second it. You either ask for a second or it's dropped. True. Thank you. Nobody's seconding. Okay, then drop. Um, I don't know if you need one to deny it. Yeah, I think we're gonna need like we we need to make a decision. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, but I don't know. Hey, we could go forward with that, and then people would vote against it, and that, or you can somebody can just make the motion to not accept leave of absence, and we can go for that. Just we do have to give something formal into the minutes. Mm -hmm. Make a motion we don't accept the leave of absence. I didn't hear that. Was it uh, that we don't accept the leave of absence? Okay. Second. I don't think I'm allowed to second. I don't need a second. Okay, let's try. And it's only so we can get somebody on the position. Yeah. Right. Yeah, this is not a personal note. Yeah. Did anyone second it? Yes. yes. Oh, 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 okay. Um, all those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Anything else under employment? I think we're all set with Um, Is there any more public input? Okay. Um, does anyone else have any? Oh, you have public input or other? Sorry. He other? Other business. Yeah. Okay. I guess we're on other now. Um, I don't know if anybody had uh, an opportunity to look at the email that I sent out earlier this week, but I attended board training um, or delegate training for the um, Maine State Education Board Assembly that's coming up this weekend. Um, there are several resolutions, and um, if you haven't had a chance to look at them, I ask you to please take a look at them and get me any feedback by midday tomorrow because what they'd like to do is to coordinate any feedback 
prior to the actual meeting so that we can get to voting right away. Um, they're pretty, um, in my opinion, they're pretty non-controversial, but I want to make sure that I represent the whole board and the administration. So I would appreciate your feedback if you have any um, thoughts, and uh, I'd be happy to take it forward on behalf of the team. Thank you. Was there, so I went through them and I didn't see anything that was concerning in any way. Was there anything that when you were looking at it? No, I mean, they were all pretty, um, in my in my mind, they were self-evident. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I looked at them and I didn't see anything. I had any problem with them. Okay. I thought it was interesting that one of the resolutions dealt with striking the term alternative programs yeah. for a path to graduation and changing it to multiple pathways for graduation. I found that to be very interesting. It, I think that the school is probably a leader in that. Yeah, we have a multiple pathway program. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That language that the language. Any more other anything else? Yeah. Any other? Um, just the I didn't get that flyer. Nothing new. Um, I know that my parents didn't get it, and uh, one grandmother didn't get it. I actually I keep forgetting that my phone won't work in here for texting. I was trying to reach out to aunts and uncles across town just to see if it's just one side. I'm not getting any of the stuff that's out. I mean, I get to see it. the lady who was sitting next to me. I kind of get to see it. It looks nice. Um, Can you do me a favor, Steph? Just um, like over the next till Monday. Keep checking. Let us know if it's starting to fall for Okay. Because you didn't get it either, Elva. Oh, but John, you got it. And like you said, you're going to get it. Susie, did you get it? it? I did not. I did not receive it, but I'm also not great at checking my mail every day. So. Okay. So there's. Okay. I don't think it's just Lebanon. I guess. I think there's a piece. Like we've got a. The PM. The post office has been doing a horrible job lately delivering mail. Someone had mentioned in Lebanon with giving it to the postmaster as opposed to just dropping off. Flyers with the post office. Yeah. I don't know how that, that makes sense. Okay. I don't know enough about it, but I figure I'll pass that on. Yeah, thank okay. you. Nope. Yep. Nope. That's good. Flyers like this have to go to Sanford. Sanford is good. Um, for Lebanon. Yeah. Yeah. I know they do with Capitol. Same thing. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Burke is the same thing. Everything is distributed out of Sanford. Okay. Okay. And, and Burrow goes to Belfort in order to get Burrow. Huh, all right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have another other. Okay. We're getting to that season of indoor activities. Yes, we are. Um, we, there's tons of people trying to use the, our facilities. Where are we at on allowing outside organizations to utilize in our facilities? Right now, what we have done is that we are allowing still the schools, take the students in the schools, if there's a school-wide event, that takes um, priorities. That's still what we're doing. Um, what we have done up to this point is allow outside groups to use the space Monday through Friday as long as the custodians are in so that they are able to clean and disinfect after that group leaves so they couldn't stay till like 11 o'clock at night when the custodial shifts leave. We have lightened up a little bit on the weekend use primarily because our custodians are stretched and um, so we tried to give a little bit of time off on the Saturday and Sunday to not have 12-hour events in the school. However, we're starting to talk with um, Matt Eaton about the auditorium here and some other different groups who want to use the buildings. And so we're going to look at things, but we don't have a blanket. Everybody can use everything Saturday and Sunday because we just no, we know that. Right. We know that. Yeah. So can we get into um, maybe you charging a fee for these guys to use these staff to, to pay for, uh, we do for personnel to come? Yeah, but we do actually charge for the use of the, um, like the custodial fees and stuff, but the reality is, is that we don't necessarily, like, we don't actually have the coverage necessarily, so that's the problem right now. Um, but we, like, typically, 
of folks pay a, a charge if, if it's outside. So there's, you know, there's our layers. Well, I mean, we have the, you have all of our rec floors. Yeah. Right? That are now finding out that they have no place to go. Yeah. Right? Uh, how do we get them back, you know, to be able to utilize the facilities like they have in years past? Because there's literally no space for these winter time activities. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's not just sports, it's also your other activities that take place here as well in the winter time. You know, how can we get around allowing them in? Whether that's, we have to, they have to increase their fees a little bit to pay the cost of what it's going to take to do the decon that needs to be done now because of COVID or um, I know that there's been many times on the weekends we've been in there and there has been zero staff there. Mm -hmm. um, I, especially in basketball, when I was coaching basketball, it, yeah. was, it was free range. There was no custodial staff right. there at all on Saturday. But it's a totally new world. Uh, correct. So now we have to deal with the decon and aspect of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can revisit that. Yeah, yeah. It's been a couple, it's been a little while since we have that conversation at the administrator level, but we will do that and we'll talk with Kevin as well just to see what we have for coverage. Um, a lot of like the youth sports, I know practices are on the weekdays sometimes and then the games, is it primarily the games on Saturdays? Well, basketball in general, you said Saturdays with bas uh, games and then practices were during the week, but there's also wrestling, there's wrestling meets, there's um, futsal has been used in our elementary schools in the past, which is an indoor soccer league. Um, and uh, you've got you've got kids within our district who are inter are active already. They've been active through this whole process, and now in winter time they're not going to really do anything because we aren't allowing any activities. So we'll, we'll look into coverage again. Maybe for the upcoming budget, could we create something? Uh, for like a weekend position, because I'm thinking about the people who are here the five days a week, and they're probably already putting in as extra time, you know, with everything we give them. And I understand why they don't want to come back on the weekends, you know. In, in all honesty, if you were to go after these, I mean, I've been a part of these youth organizations for a long time, and these parents, if you wanted to go to them and say, "All right, well, yes, you can use it, but you're responsible for doing the cleaning aspect of it," I know that there's some issues of did they actually clean it? Did they not? But uh, I'm sure they would all step up and, and get the cleaning done in order to get the facilities used. You know. But yeah. uh, it's kind of a time sensitive event because we're running out of running out of time to figure out where they're all going to go. Okay. Right. Yes. Yeah. So I had another other two. Um, I don't know if there's really anything we can do about it. I mean, you guys are talking about it too with the shortage of bus drivers, everything like that. Just hearing out of Lebanon, the uh, hurt that's being felt as far as the ed techs not having them, um, just the effect on the classroom. And I, it's not just like they're one dude here, they're one person, or this is their group of people. They kind of spread out and help out all the way around the school. And um, it's causing issues with the uh, like head classroom teachers who used to have things that they could get help with that don't. Mm -hmm. Just speaking aloud, that is some of the frustration I'm hearing, and I don't know what we can do about it. Um, like you guys said, there's a shortage, but it's definitely being felt and seen. Yes, it's affecting the things yeah. that are going home and activities. Yeah. Absolutely. Are we able to get parent assistance in that aspect? Like back in the day, we had parents come in all the time and help the teachers out with printing this and printing that and doing this. I know we've kind of shied away because of the COVID aspect, but are we allowed to? Move them forward if they're vaccinated. They're coming in and being helpful or something. I don't think that's a bad idea. I think to maybe I'm misreading what you're saying, but is it more like the instructional support in yes. the classroom? So it's well, more of the teaching piece, or is it more like the actually it's a combo? Okay, um, but some of the yeah. stuff for the even the, the materials that they, they can't introduce the new stuff because they haven't had time to prep it, so they're recycling and um, okay. it's both. Sure. Okay. Okay. So yes, we can certainly look at parent volunteers for something. This is a terrible question, I suppose, to ask. But do you still have classroom parents? I mean, it, when my kids were going through school, there were two or three parents mm -hmm. who were dedicated to each class. Mm -hmm. 
does that still happen anymore? I think it happens in some rooms, but it's not a blanket practice across the board. Mm -hmm. And we we find more um, parent involvement at the lower levels. Yes. Um, so, and as they grow up, you know, they don't want to see the parents. <laughs> <laughs> but it's somebody else's classroom. Yeah. yeah. But we've got active PTAs. Yes. So yes. maybe that's one area that we can tap that we used to have. Um, PTAs used to, or PTOs, used to come in and do some copying, and they used mm -hmm. to have a cycle of that. So maybe that's something that we can look at again as just a, a real natural just reintegration of that process. Yeah. yeah, I think it's kind of gone by the wayside of COVID, but I think it's something that we can put back what we had. I know there's people out there that want to do it. Right. Oh. Right. Or that will step up and do it in a heartbeat mm -hmm. if they're asked. Anyone else have another? Another? Oh, I, I just had to ask. I was very disappointed when I saw the North Berwick. Uh, mm -hmm. Recommendation to vote no in the school. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow um, at 10 30, mm -hmm. I'm doing an interview with BCTV, and one of the things that I'm going to highlight is the process of the building, mm -hmm. the building process, and how it could take 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, just if timing hits a certain way, um, because that is a, a little bit of misinformation that's out there. So hopefully to correct that. And we shared the we shared the article. The article, article with somebody with somebody yeah. 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 And yeah. I asked Rebecca to share yeah. it with um, someone special in her life who might have some yeah. influence. Mm -hmm. sure. Get the um, board to read it because. It, I think there was a misperception that there were funds available when, yeah. I mean, theoretically there are, but. Yeah, realistically, it's, it's the not odds of getting them, in, and you're not going to get them in time for. Yeah. Well, the unfortunate piece is that we're just growing. Like, it was, or it's good, right? It's good that we have people moving in and we have families that want to be with us, but it's a, it's a pretty big. Uh, it's pretty big ask in all of our towns, mm -hmm. and Lebanon in particular is really, you know, that's a, that's a tough spot. So we want to make sure that gets taken care of. So the no vote was, uh, or the that recommendation was was unfortunate. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a hard. Uh, I think looking at the timeline that was presented, I think we still have to make sure that people understand that yeah, no. we still have no space. For the next and period. even if this is voted yes on November 2nd, there's potential in the next couple of years that you're still going to see trailers yeah, right. at our schools or cottages, or whatever you want to call them nowadays, because we still don't have space. And this process is not something that happens overnight. Right. We're trying to fix it so that it's not a 10 or 15 year yeah. process. Because yeah. we don't have 10 or 15 years. We really don't have the three years that I think that timeline said. It might have been four years that that timeline said. But and I think the contingency plan um, for the whole trailers and whatnot should, I don't know how it needs to get out more because I think there's a thought behind everything that, okay, this doesn't go through, what's the next proposal, you know? And the, that's why it's the building committee meeting on November 3rd. We can really kind of talk through some of that as yeah. well. But tomorrow when I do the um, interview and the talk, we will certainly address some of that, like what if what happens next because it, magically we don't have space. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Know, we can't just space. put space there even if we don't build the buildings. Right, right. There's nothing. Right. Right. We're mapped in almost all of our buildings. Right. Right. Yeah. Did you we get to go in at, to North Berwick during the day? Have you been there? I have oh, okay. yeah. But I, I would like to do that. Yes, yes. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I would raise my hand and say if any of the board members want to join me on school tours, mm -hmm. I'd like to set them up between now and Christmas so that we can. Would you like me to facilitate that? That would be awesome. Uh, you, have to, done that before. you have to be careful though, don't you? With the amount of people at one time? Yeah, we'll do it. We'll, we'll, we'll make it work. Um, I started that last year with Love and I, and I want to make it to the other towns, and my understanding is that Wednesday half days works. I think they prefer that we don't go in when the students are there. That's the only thing. Okay. Well, I don't do going though because I, I will join you. And you do want to see the crunch, like you want to see it with students there. Yeah. 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 Although I was there this week at one of the schools, and it, I would say there wasn't a whole lot of crunch because there wasn't a whole lot of students in school. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And not because of. Uh, there was extra space. It was because of the COVID had pushed out so many of our kids in quarantine. Yes. Um, 
it's going to be a hit and miss on what you see because you don't, you don't know, you know, you can see if there's a space for somebody, right. but there ain't nobody there today. I mean, the downside is if we, we don't have the space now, we are pretty lucky with our class sizes. The next step would be to trailers or increase our class sizes, which is not going to help our students or our teachers. The, the thing that always puzzles me is if you're not going to increase your school space and support your school budget that's necessary for the number of students, stop giving out building permits. <laughs> I mean, if you're giving out building permits, families are going to move in and they're going to need schooling. Well, you're seeing. You're also seeing a lot of over uh, turnover. A lot of houses that didn't have kids are now being sold. To houses that do have kids. Yes. So that that doesn't involve any building permits. That's 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 yeah. switching things around, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've drove by multiple times. I was, oh, look, there's a house that had no kids, or the kids just graduated out, and now there's three more kids in that house. Mm -hmm. um, can we make sure that the indoor the building use thing gets on the next yep. agenda? Mm -hmm. it's, we're meeting with the administrative team on Tuesday and Saturday. I think we need to interview tomorrow. Yes. That you need to give tax information based on the actual average valuation of okay. homes. Mm -hmm. Because the average valuation in North World is 300000 Yes. So actually, someone's going to be paying over $120 the first year yes, and $350 the second year. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot to ask of the taxpayers. Okay. Yeah. I think we are it's, a, it's a hard, we're in a hard place. Wait, are you going to have a at certain times or is this on demand? So it'll get, I would assume she's not going to do live. So she'll, within the next couple days, it'll get posted on Berwick's community TV channels that we have through Comcast. Okay. But she also has a, uh, a YouTube channel that you could subscribe to or wouldn't watch it once she posts it on YouTube. And what we'll do Monday or Tuesday is also send out a community notification. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hit at all residents, but parents or anybody that's signed up to have that and we will share the link for that information and, and we'll, we'll show the, one of the clips of the building project okay. shows again. Okay. Yeah, we'll put that out there. I also think people need to realize that if they pass the 57,000, they're all also going to be on the hook for the 13 million taxes. I don't think they realize that. Right. And that is in the question. Under the question, there is a little uh, part that talks about interest. I have one other other that just popped in my head, and it's more of a parent. And I don't know if you feel it, but I feel it. Lunches, the lunch menus get put out, and what the kids are going to have for lunches those days, and they went, oh, that's what I'm going to have for lunch. I get to school, and that's not what their option is. So then they don't eat lunch because we changed the lunch menu on them. Okay. Without yeah. notification, That's the first time I've heard that. it happens. It happens more frequently than I ever realized because I've got picky eaters, and so when they pick their meal, I'm going to go get that, and they, okay. it's not there. So I don't know why we're changing it off of what the actual menu is. I'd like for us to stick to the meat menu, but I do understand that there's probably going to be some things that are out of our control. Um, so somehow we got to send out some sort of a notification or something that says, "Hey, we're changing the menu today, or we're going to change the menu tomorrow," so that these kids have an idea. What they're going to eat. Uh -huh. was, I, I guess I'm glad you brought that up because it, I wouldn't have thought of this otherwise. Um, there's also a fruit juice shortage, I guess. Um, they're running, there's only two days in Lebanon that they do the fruit juice, and they're actually running out before they get every student one that has uh, signed up for lunch that day. And that's stuff that's out of our control, yeah. but, but it's still a. It's kind of wild. Is, is yeah. it supply chain? <laughs> <laughs> it is absolutely supply chain. Yeah. Abby works in our office, and daily she gets notification that all of these things you've ordered, they're not coming. You can; these are other things that might interest you. She's dealing with that daily. Yeah. So you know, oh, there's chicken patties that every kid loves. Well, you're not getting chicken patties. Would you like fish sticks? Would you like like? It's a severe, yeah. severe supply chain. She's getting probably. I think she said like. Two thirds of the things she ordered, she's getting, yep. and everything else she has to go back and try to fill in and substitute. 
which I suspected was the issue. We're just going to communicate. Yes. We're changing the menu for the day because you know half the time my kids are like, well, I would have rather had home lunch, but instead I didn't have anything because there's nothing there that I wanted to eat. And an alternative to the drink thing, just because I guess if they run out, there's some kids who haven't been drinking, and the water I was told was 75 cents, so then some aren't getting that because they didn't have money on their account or something. So everything, like your basic meals are all free, right, Denise? Am I not? Yes. The it's water is not. For 50 cents and waters were 75. Yeah. I thought those were the two paid things, or at least that's the... Well, I was going to say, water, water is not, water you have to pay for. Anything above and beyond you have to pay for. Yeah. But I'm just saying, if they run yeah. out of juice, yeah. like, yeah. should be... Like letting them have some kind of beverage. And we shouldn't be turning people away if they don't have money in their funds. Well, I believe we've addressed that multiple times in years past. Yeah, well, we'll talk with we'll talk with Abby about that. But I, yeah, because I mean, honestly, there lunches <laughs> like across the board to everybody, so there shouldn't be. And then there was, yeah, the turning away I think was for a, a meal. A meal. Yep. It was not for a la carte or others. Right. Uh, I believe, but mm -hmm. uh, Abby, yeah, Abby, that was like that. Okay. Any other other? Oh. Um. Somebody want to make a motion to adjourn? Uh, we cannot adjourn. We have executive we have session. Three executive, three executive sessions. sessions. So do we have to like? Oh, okay. We got to do the motion for executive session first. Yeah. Oh, would someone like to make a motion for executive session to go into executive session? So.